just like you, brother. Don't they give you hope? Don't right. they have you to understand that you're royalty walking this earth? That the Lord looks just like you, brother? I mean, brother, just like you, brother. That's how I look. Bro. And he damn sure don't look like this. Bro. Right. Bring it on. Okay? And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man. So the Son of Man will be Jesus Christ. And his real name is Yahweh. You know? Clothed with a garment down to the foot. So in the ancient world, we didn't wear damn uh, skinny jeans and damn all of these uh, designer jeans and designer clothes. We had a long garment on, like you see, right down to the foot, like our forefathers. We wore long garments. That's royalty walking the earth, right, Reed? And girt about the packs with a golden girdle. And he had a golden girdle in him, like a man of war. Because in ancient time, you would wear the golden girdle so you wouldn't get crushed through and you fought with war. He's a mighty man. So called Jesus Christ had a had a girl on, man. War. A war belt like the brother said, man. Right? He wasn't walking around on a chimney with his hair kind of blowing like 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 in the damn wind. Like last year. Right. Right, Rudolph. You know? Verse 14. His head and his hair were white like wool. White like what? White like wool. White like wool, man. White as snow. Hey, look at the eldest head. The elder has white woolly hair. Look at the elder in front of us, right? He has white woolly hair. That's in the Bible. The Lord himself has what? White woolly hair. He's not this man right here, man. Who is this guy? Who is this guy? Right. This is an actual man. Right. This is literally an actual man that they set up to deceive the people, man. To portray the image of our Lord and Savior. Read that again from the top. Uh, his hands and his hairs right, chapter 14, were chapter white like wool. Were white like wool. As white as snow. As white as snow. And his eyes. And his eyes. Now, were this as man, a, now this man has blue eyes. Right? He has done all type of uh, different color eyes. Read. Were as a flame of fire. Our Lord and Savior looked like he had a flame of fire in his eyes. You know you look into somebody's eyes and they red. And you kind of get scared. Our Lord and Savior did not look like this man behind us, man. Right. Right, Reed? And his feet. And his feet. Now, isn't the feet the, co uh, the color of the rest of your body? Look at this uh, sister's feet. They're not orange. They're not blue. They're not teal or green. They're brown just like the rest of her skin. Now, I was given a description of our Lord and Savior's feet. Bro. And his feet like unto fine brass. Hey, what color is brass, brother? Brown. Right? Isn't brass brown? All right, look at a penny. Look at this brother's bike. Hey, 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 hold it down. Nah, ain't no look. Ain't no take a look. Ain't no take a look. Right? Right, and it says in his feet. Like unto fine brass. Like unto fine brass. Now brown, right, uh, brass is a derivative of brown. Like this brother's Bible would be considered brass. Right? Now our skin is brass is what? As if they burned in a furnace. As if they burned in a furnace. Now, if you throw anything in a furnace, some cookies, some toast, right? You throw anything in a furnace, what color is it going to be? Black. It's going to be black. I mean, you throw it in you, you throw it in that furnace, and those flames get the heating up, it's going to be black. Our Lord and Savior was darker than everybody out here, man. Right? Right. That's in the Bible. Read. And his voice, the sound of many waters. And his voice was very loud. That's why we are men and we got to speak with authority. Right. You can't be like the so-called white man system, want us to shave our beards, want us to wear suits and bow down and speak polite. No, our Lord was a man of war with red eyes, strong hair, and he spoke with authority, man. That's right. right. And that's why we got to do according to the scriptures. Now, who is this man? This is a lie setup. You said, what's this? Right? So this was the last setup. Give me the book of Wisdom of Solomon. All right, chapter 14 of verse 12. This is the book of Wisdom of Solomon. Chapter 14, verse 12. Let's figure out who this man is. He's a physical man. For the devising of idols was the beginning of spiritual fornication. So the devising of idols, all of the idols that we set up. Hey, sister, whether you know it or not, sister, whether you know it or not, you got an idol around your neck. That's a cross. That's evil coming to the world. The Lord hates that. I mean, the Lord utterly hates that, that you wear the cross around your neck. That's the device. So the device of the idols is the beginning of spiritual fornication. Like angels, like idols, crosses, like the scriptures and pictures of so-called Jesus Christ. And the Lord hates these things. Preach. Um, and the inventions of them, the corruption of life. Right? For neither were they from the beginning, neither shall they be forever. Right? 
for by the vain glory of men. They entered into the world, and therefore shall they come shortly to an end. Right? For a father afflicted with untimely mourning. So this is going into a father. He was afflicted, meaning the son died. Right? And this is a physical man. A Pope Alexander, man. This is a physical uh, damn devil that walked the earth. And it's giving you the account and history of this man and the scripture. Read. When he hath made an image. And say he hath made an image. This is in the Bible. Now the Lord not going to just kind of throw something out there you can't understand. Everything from the beginning is sketched out for the men of understanding, keeping the law, statutes, and commandments, and the Israelites to be able to perceive and understand. Read. Made an image of his child. Now he made an image of his son. Read. Soon taken away. And he died. Now honor him as a god. Now this man is honored as a god. Right. Right? They literally set up this image and honored this man as a god. Read. Which was then a dead man. And he's a dead man. Read. And delivered to those that were under him ceremonies and sacrifices. Read. Thus, in process of time. So thus in the process of time, meaning the time we living in now. An ungodly custom. Now this is an ungodly custom. Right. Where can you find in the Bible that Moses was walking around with images? Where can you find that King David was holding it up pictures and images, man? Where can you find these accounts? Right, where can you find this at all? What was Paul walking around with, with that pictures and, and images, man? In this process of time, uh, thus, in the process of time, an ungodly custom. Hey, that's an ungodly custom, read. Grown strong was kept as a law. And now this is kept as a law. Because everywhere you go throughout the United States, throughout the four corners of the earth, you see this man in England, in Australia, Arkansas. In the four corners of the earth, you can bet your bottom dollar that any church you go to, any damn religion, any damn place, that you want to see this man. Why? Because that's an ungodly custom made to be an image to deceive the people. And graven images were worshipped by the commandments of kings. And it was worshipped by the kings of the earth, right? But we can't do these things. Let me first mock at these three and forty-eight. Right? Let's first mock at these chapter three and verse forty-eight. So we here to tell y'all, man, we gotta break down these strongholds. All of these lies that we've been taught from the time that we've been born, and we gotta wake up out of sleep, man. That's in the Bible. Bring that up. Man. It's the book of 1 Maccabees, chapter 3 and verse 48. And laid open the book of the law. Now, if you didn't know, this is the book of the law. Everything in this book is the law. Now, the heathens are the other nations. They literally came together with a crafty council and laid open our Bible. Now, from the very beginning, this was ours. But then they got their hands on it. We couldn't speak. We couldn't read. We were enslaved. They got a hold of our scriptures. They laid open our book, and what did they do? Wherein the heathen, the heathen of the other nations, has sought to paint the likeness of their images. That did what? Paint the likeness the of, of their, their images. images. And these heathens opened up our Bible, and they sought, meaning they sought to paint the likeness of their images. So when you go into Google and you see angels, what do you see? White little boys, white little girls. When you open it up, right, and you type in Jesus Christ, what do you see? This image. When you type God in, there's a long white robe on, a uh, uh, damn uh, white man, right, and just sitting upon a throne. That's not in the Bible. Right. The heathens did this to confuse us. Now when you ask Jake, which is Israel, who they are, that's a white man. Oh, I'm not gonna, didn't we, didn't we get enslaved by this? They're confused. Because we've been mentally destroyed and raped, man, and bungled by the spiritual thing of Satan and all of these nations, man. Now, if you had a book that was literally ours, why is it telling us that we're the greatest people on earth? Right. Why is it telling us from Genesis to Revelation, we're the only people that matter? Right. Why is the Lord only coming for the children of Israel and nobody else? That's why right. is the Lord saying that we had kings that look just like us? Why is it saying that we're the greatest people that ever was and ever will be, man, if this is a so-called white man's book? Right. Now, why did the Lord say this? Give me the book of Job chapter 9 verse 24. This is the book of Job. Now, I want somebody to answer this. If somebody can answer this, we need to know that. We need to know the answer to this. Chapter 9 and verse 24. Bring it out. The earth is given into the hands of the wicked. Now the Almighty God said the earth itself is given into the hand of the wicked. Now who runs the earth? What nation of people? The so-called white man, right? Now the Lord said the earth itself is given into the hands of the wicked. Now who owns everything? Who has government? Who can invade lands? Who, who names streets? Look at every building you see. Do I own these things? 
Does this brother own these things? What about you, Elder? Is this something we don't know? <laughs> Hold on, brother. It's something we don't know. No, it's something we don't know, right? Right? Because you're in the same position that we are. I got you, but let me finish bringing out the uh, precept. Right? Now, the Lord said the earth is given into the hands of the wicked. He owns everything, man. He has the government, the powers, and all this is on the left hand side. You know? He covered the faces. Now, the Lord said that the wicked man, he's going to cover the faces. Of the judges thereof. Now, who are the real judges of the earth? The Israelites. Right. The kings of the earth. The judges that you even got a whole book called Judges. Right. He covered all of those faces. The angels judge, man. Children of Israel judge. The mighty men and the kings. The prophets. Right? Our leaders. And our, all of our mighty men, man. Our captains and generals. Hey, he covered up all their faces. Now, when you look in the Bible, you don't see the ancient images that were once up, man. You got, a, you got a, literally a book called Russian Icon. Right? Now this is what the original images were painted on. Through a process of time, right? An ungodly custom was kept. And now it's this man right here. Right? You went from the beginning of this will be so-called Jesus Christ. This will be the 12 apostles. And all of this is history. Right? Images set up. And now what do you see? So-called white man, right? You don't see an African Jesus. Right. Right, you don't see a Chinese Jesus. You don't see an Arab Jesus. And what you do see is a so-called white man portraying himself as Jesus. Why? Because he proclaims himself as God walking the earth. Right? Why? Bring it out, Ellis. You got a question or a point? Way too fast. Because they own everything, like you said, but it was given to them. It was given to them. Say that again? I said it was given to them. Right. By the most high. Because we didn't keep the law, statutes, and commandments. From the, very, from the very beginning, it was given to him. Right? Let's get that. Let's get that in the book of Genesis. Right? Chapter 27. Let's start at 40. Hey, sister, you understand who you are? What's your nationality? I can't hear you. Right? Well, that's not a nationality, sister. That's a, that's a Bible. Now, we going over and letting our people know. What's our nationality, sister? Chinese, what about you? You said black, what about you? Said? Yeah, that's why. Well, what's your father? Well, that's how we are. We have proclaimed to the children of Israel who they are. Our people are walking around, don't know who they are, going to and fro. Different philosophies, different doctrines. Way and just, just in this, in that. They don't know what's going on. Give me the book of Song of Solomon, chapter 3 and verse 1. Who is that? Give me the book of Song of Solomon, chapter 3 and verse 1. I'm about to show you in the Bible, right? Give me the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 22. The book of Song of Solomon, chapter 3 and verse 1. By night on my bed, I sought him. Who my soul loveth. And hey, the Lord said by night a lost soul is seeking the Lord, man. Right? Can y'all come in closer so I have to strain my voice? Right? We out here for y'all. Right? So the Lord said what? By night on my bed I sought him who my soul loveth. Aren't you seeking the truth, sister? But you want to know who you are? You've been born, right? You've raised up to whatever number of years you are. You still don't know who you are. It's been stripped from us as We still can't go back to figure out what we were doing in the ancient world. What language we spoke, how we used to dress, what, what feast days we kept. We don't know anything other than what? Whatever this land portrays. What? Halloween, New Year's, Easter, Christmas. This is all you know. Why do you know these things? Because you've been raised in this land. But what about before you came to this land? What were you doing before that? And we're here to tell you. We're here to give you the sense of the understanding of who you are walking this earth. As Christmases of the Lord. Right? You know? I sought him, but I found him not. Today right? I will arise. They said I found him not. Meaning you walking around seeking the truth, but you're not finding it. See? I will rise now and go about the city and the streets. And the Lord said, now this soul is going to rise up and walk amongst the streets. That's what you're doing. You didn't know that day you was going to find out who you are. You what you've been living 25 years of your life. Now you find, finally finding out who you are according to the Bible. Right, Greek? Really? And in the broad ways. Hey, look at the broad ways. You got the broadest of ways, Reed. I will seek him who my soul loveth. He's just walking around seeking the truth. Right, Reed? I sought him, but I found him not. But you still didn't find the truth. 
Right, Bree? The watchmen that go about the city. Now, who are the watchmen? The watchmen are the ones that sit up on the high towers with the scopes. They blow trumpets and they besiege and let everything know what's going on. Now, if it was a damn uproar, right, right across that uh, that building right there, we couldn't see. The watchmen will proclaim through the tire and blow the trumpet to let us know what's going on. Now, the watchman's job is very important. The watchmen around the city, they're the ones that watch for the souls. Right? They say, do you know who you are? What's going on? What's your nationality? The watchman found me. Right? Read. Watchmen that go about the city found me. To whom I said, saw ye him whom my soul loveth. I mean, did he see the truth? Who, 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 is, who is the Lord? Right? What, what's my nationality? Right? That's what they asked me. Read. It was but a little that I passed from them. But I found him. Who am I so loving? Hey, we here to tell you, you're going to find the Lord right now, this day, man. You're going to find the Lord, man. Right. He's right in the presence of us right now, proclaiming the truth in these last days. Read. I held him. Hey, are you going to hold the Lord tight once you understand the truth? Or are you going to let it slip through your fingers? Yeah. You want to hold it tight, sister? Wasn't we holding these lies tight? Right? All of our life. Now we gotta let these things go and hold on to the truth. Don't let it go. I held him and would not let him go until I had brought him into my mother's house. So I brought him into my mother's house. You can rest right there. Give me the book of Job chapter 36 and you can start at verse 4. Bring out the book of uh, Jeremiah chapter 37 verse 4. This is the book of Jeremiah. I want you to tell me this happens to you, sister, right? Now you say he's Native American, right? Now the Lord, he never called anybody a Native American. That's not in the Bible. We'll throw down everything and leave if you could pull up a uh, Native American in the Bible, Puerto Amen. Rican in the Bible, Cuban in the Bible, white man in the Bible. You're not gonna find these terms. Now the Lord has 18 nations of people from back then to now. The same nations of people that were walking the earth are now here today. You don't read about the ancient Canaanites and they kind of disappeared off the face of the earth. Like the Moabites, the Ammonites, the Edomites, the Israelites, and they all just disappeared. These same people that were in the scriptures are now back here on the earth. That's right. Right? Bring it up. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 17 and verse 4. Bring it out. And thou, even thyself. Now the Lord said, thou, even thyself. He's talking to you, sister. Shall discontinue from thine heritage. Hey, sister, did you discontinue from your heritage? And that's prophecy. The Lord said that his people, and they were discontinued from that area. That's in the Bible. Right, Bree? That I gave thee, and I will cause thee to serve thine enemies. Are we serving our enemies in this land? Don't we work for them? Don't we answer to them? Can't they lock us up unjustly? And the Lord says straight up and down, we have to serve our enemies in a land which we know of not. Did we ever know America? Or was we dragged, snatched, and brought here, man? Do we know America? Doesn't the climate kind of change when it gets funky and dirty in this land? Right? Hey, we from Jerusalem. We got this allergies. You said what? We got allergies hey, here. Got allergies in this land. All type of damn climate shifts and changes. Hey, we didn't, we didn't deal with that in Israel. Right, Bree? Oh. And I will cause thee to serve thine enemies. And the Lord said, I'm going to cause you to serve your enemies. In a land which thou knowest not. And we never knew this land. For ye have kindled a fire in mine anger, which shall burn forever. The book of Job, chapter 36, and verse 4. For truly my words shall not be false. He that is perfect in knowledge is with thee. Behold, God is mighty and despiseth not any. He is mighty in strength and wisdom. Right? He preserves not the life of the wicked. Right? He's not going to preserve your life if you wicked. That's why the Lord put us in the death, right? In these conditions. Because we are his children. And we about to read about slavery in the Bible after this verse. Bring it out. But give a right to the poor. Right? He will draw not his eyes from the righteous. But with kings are they on throne, on the throne. Read. Yeah, he doth establish them forever. And he established the mighty brothers and the kings forever, even though it feels like you departed from the Lord right through all our transgressions. And they are exalted. 
And if they be bound in fetters. And if the kings of the earth, meaning us, if we be bound in fetters, now fetters are yokes of iron. The Lord said if his people be bound in fetters and be holding in cords of affliction. Now hold on now. Who's the Lord speaking to? We went to Jeremiah. We went to, we went to what? We went to Job. We went to Deuteronomy. And we all throughout the Bible, the Lord talking about chains, captivity, death, oppression, and slavery. Who can relate to this but us? If these people be bound in chains and fetters and cords of affliction, of affliction, then he saw them their work. Then he's going to show you where you went on. Because whether you know it or not, this is called punishment. When you have a child, right, you beat him when he's doing wrong. Right, you beat him. You don't let your child continuously be with you. The same, the Lord is our Father which are in heaven, and he's going to chastise us. He's not going to come down off his mighty throne and whip out a golden belt and start sprinkling us up inside our head. Right. That's not how the Lord gets down. The Lord has a bitch hopping on the earth like slaves, tornadoes, cars flipping over. These are all of the judgments of the Lord. Read. And he showed them their work and their transgressions that they have exceeded. Hey, the Lord going to make that manifest in that Bring that out for you. Give me the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28. I'm going to Deuteronomy chapter 28. Book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 15. Right? But it shall come to pass. Now who out here heard of Moses? What's your nationality, sister? You said a gypsy? All right, well, the Lord said straight up and down, right? It shall come to pass. You can hand the Moses. Now, who, who who out here heard of the uh, Moses? You heard of Moses? What about you, sister? Now, was Moses about three weeks ago? Literally. How long ago was Moses? What about 15 years? Like thousands of years. Right. Now, this is called the prophecy in the Bible. Now, a lot of people, they read the Bible, but they don't understand there are literally prophecies in it. Now, say somebody was right here saying the Bible isn't real. It's not talking about that. But well, they're going to have to explain what you about to read. This is Moses on a Mount Sinai talking to all the children of Israel 4,000 years ago. That's see what pertains to the children of Israel. Read. Deuteronomy 28, 15. But it shall come to pass. Now it's going to come to pass, read. If thou will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. If the children of Israel, the black, Hispanics, and Native Americans don't hearken unto the Lord. To observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day. What's going to happen to the children of Israel for not listening to the Lord? That all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. You listen, sisters. So what's going to happen to the children of Israel for not listening to the Lord? Oh, y'all got to listen up. It's a lot of distractions. It's helicopters. It's evil communication. It's a lot of damn gypsies everywhere. It's a lot of things that's going to cause you to not yield to the understanding of the Lord. The wind might blow. Right, a damn noise might erupt. A trumpet might blow. All oh, hell might break loose. We got to listen while we still can. Read that again for the top. But it shall come to pass. Right? If thou will not hearken unto the voice yes, of the here. Lord thy God. It shall come to pass. This is Moses speaking unto the Israelites. If you don't listen to the Lord thy God. To observe to do all his commandments. Every last one of his commandments. And his statutes. Which I command thee this day. What's going to happen to the children of Israel for not listening to the Lord? No. That all these curses. Hey, curses are going to happen. That's not paying for it. Hey, you could get popped. <laughs> hey, what if you're, what if, that's not, what you're paying for it so broad. Hey, curses is kind of right there in the cross, right straight like that. And you can pay for it and then walk back up and go about your way. They're bringing these people to Christ. And he's to this very day. These curses will be forever till we get to the kingdom. Right? Now curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So curses is upon one nation of people for breaking the law sentence of the command. Now, if you were to ask right now, way before we read the curses, who would you say that's curse walking the earth? If you can name any nation, would it be the so-called white man? The Chinese man? Who's cursed? Black male. You said what? Black male. Right, so, hey, is it just the male? Yeah. No, it's, it's more than just the male. No, it's the male. Right? Well, that's a false accusation. The black what, what do you say? Good. Black female. You said it all depends. So is the white man living in uh, what the ghettos and the slums? Is he living in the hood? Now how is it? I mean, I mean, one nation of people. 
We can't pick and choose and say some are living like this, some aren't. As a whole nation of people, the Lord said one nation would be cursed, right? Now, if you could pick what nation it would be, what would it be, brother? So-called black man, Hispanic and Native American. Read verse 15, Salaki, verse uh, 16. Verse 16, cursed shall thy be in the city. So when you cursed in the cities, you sucking on that glass pipe, right? You damn shooting up in your arm, you prostituting in the uh, damn highways and byways. These things pertain to women. Women running out the households, not having a father in their lives. These things pertain to women. When you getting raped in the streets, these things pertain to women. Right. All of these things in the Bible are for the man, woman, and child of the Israelite nation. That's right. Right? Cursed in the cities, you know? And cursed shall thy be in the field. Now, who was literally cursed in the fields? I mean, literally. Did the woman kind of escape slavery? Or was she the main bad witch? The main bad witch, right? Right? Read on. Because the black man can't defend her. Curse shall be thy basket and thy store. Now you can rest right there. Give me verse 41. Verse 41. Thou shalt beget sons and daughters. And the Lord said thou shalt beget sons and daughters, meaning we will have children, but what? But thou shalt not enjoy them. So who wouldn't be able to enjoy their children? For what reason? For they shall go into captivity. And the Lord said that the Israelites will go into captivity. What nation of people ever went into captivity? I mean, it's kind of obvious, sisters. We reading this off the Bible. It's okay. Hey, he didn't make this up and write it. Right. Like, this brother didn't just have a highlighter and switch it to cursing. And I didn't come out here with my own mind and what I want to do. This is literally written in the Bible. Right. So who was literally in captivity? What nation of people? Black people. Black come on, people. sisters. Why are you not asking the question? It's obvious. Black people. I mean, but the Lord not speaking to the black people. He's speaking to the Israelites. Right? Give me verse 68. Let's see what pertains else to the Israelites. This is Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. And the Lord said, look, I'm going to bring you back into Egypt. Now, we figured out what Egypt was early. What is Egypt, brother? Bondage. Now, let's, let's hear it out the Bible, right? Let's hear what Egypt is out the Bible. This is the book of Exodus chapter 20 and verse 2. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, right? Out of the house of bondage. So Egypt is the house of bondage, right? So Egypt is known as what, sisters? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. What is Egypt known as, sisters? Yeah, the house of slavery. So let's read it in the scriptures. Bring it out, King. This is Deuteronomy 28 and 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. Back into slavery again. Now, how do we get to this land? What way of transportation? Ships. But that's here out the Bible, which is a prophecy written 4,000 years ago. The Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with yes, ships. Yes, that's in the Bible. Read. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. And the Lord said the children of Israel wouldn't see our homeland no more again. Did any of you see a homeland ever again? Can't the Chinese man go back to China and the African man go back to Africa? Why can't all of these nations go back to their providences and cities and countries where their dwelling places at, right? But where can we go back to? Right. We don't even know. We kind of just, I'm from Detroit, and I'm ready to die of Detroit native, right? Are right? you from Atlanta, man? I'm from D.C., man. You from Baltimore? I'm from D.C., right? Hey, brother, where well, you not from D.C.? You're not from Baltimore. These are places where you were dragged in captivity and slavery. Right. right. Where we come from, it's Israel. That's right. That's our homeland and our holy life. Right? right. Finish that off, King. And like it. thou shalt see it no more again, and there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. And the Lord said, and there, after you get off from slave ships, you're going to be sold to your enemies. Now, who sold us? Who was we sold to? Hey, what did the Lord just call me? There you should be sold unto your enemies. So, I mean, who, who is the so-called white man to? He's your enemy. That's you go, right. Sister. That's in the Bible. Don't you feel like he's your enemy? Doesn't he tell you what to do? Don't you work for him? Don't you go into his grocery stores? Can't he lock you up? Can't he beat you down and get away with it? Doesn't he rule over you? Can't he kick you out your apartment building anytime he wants because he's the landlord? 
Don't you play uh, so-called land rent to him? Right? Hey. All of these things pertain to what? The Israelites. Right, bro? Right. They should be sold unto your enemies for bond men Slave man. and bond women. Right? And no man shall buy you. Ain't nobody going to redeem you, save you out of this captivity that we living in but the Lord himself. So I got to ask you. If having yokes of iron upon your necks go to slavery or slave ships, be it cursed around the cities and the street corners, the slums and the ghettos, it's pertaining to the Israelites to this very day, then who must we be? I can't hear you, sister. There you go, sister. Right, that's right, that's right. You, you said what? Israel. That's right. right. Hey, brother, who are you? What about you, brother? What about you, sister? Israelites, right? We're ah. the Israelites of the Bible. Now we gotta break down these strongholds and chains off our mind that they have been telling us, man, from generations to generations to generations. Right? Give me the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 37. Uh, book of Deuteronomy chapter. So do y'all have any questions pertaining to anything that has to do with church, so-called religion, lies that you've been taught, or anything? Hey, that's why we hit it. We gotta break it down and give you the sense. Because you've been told a lot, man. You don't have to physically get baptized under water. That's not in the Bible. No, I didn't say that. You don't have to physically get baptized in the water. Right? That's not in the Bible. Right? It's a lot of things that we've been taught that we need to do. You don't have to physically go to a, a house of the Lord. That's not in the Bible. These are lies that we've been told to steal our money, to deceive us, to have us believe in something that isn't true by this teacher right here. The teacher of lies. Right. I'm just saying, yeah, no hey, you're not supposed to pay ties to the past. Right. Well, sister, do you love yourself? Do you love the Lord? Now, you have an idol around your neck, right? Now, that literally is a deception idol. Right? Give me the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 36. It's the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, and verse 36. Bring it out. The Lord shall bring thee and thy king which thou shalt set over thee unto a nation whether thou nor thy fathers have known and there thou shalt serve other gods he said hey after you get off them slave ships when you get to this place you gonna serve other gods we never knew no cross and christianity in our homeland this is what we learned in america we never did these things read on and then thou shalt serve other gods, wood and stone. What the Lord say? Wood, wood and, and stone. stone. Sister, what is that around your neck? And what is it made out of? It's made out of wood. Now the Lord said you would serve other idols, even wood and stone. That's in the Bible. And you literally have that idol that the Lord hates. That is an accursed thing around your neck. And the Lord said when you get to the land of your captivity, you will serve other gods which you never knew, even wood and stone. When you go to any church, you see a big old wooden cross. We never knew that. If our people actually open up the Bible and read for themselves, they will see how much they're being lied to. Instead of going to a place to feel good, when it ain't nothing to feel good about, man. You in slavery. Right. You in this land that you've been dragged to. What the hell is it to be happy about? Right? Give me the book of Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 25. This is the book of Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 25. Bring it right. out. The graven images of their gods shall ye burn with fire. Hey, the Lord said so you shall burn that with fire, sister. You should utterly get rid of that, Greek. Thou shalt not desire the silver or gold that is on them, right? nor take it unto thee, lest thou be snared therein. Hey, the Lord said so you'll be snared. I mean, you might start kissing it then. Oh, my lucky cross. I can't go out the house today without my cross. I need my cross today. Hey, hey, my grandmother gave me to this and it's very dear to my heart. And I, I feel like she's watching above me on high. These are lies, man. That's an idol, right? That you be snared in a trap therein. For it is an abomination to the Lord thy God. Read. Neither shall thy bring an abomination into thine house. Hey, the Lord said you shouldn't even take that in your house. Read. Lest thou be cursed. Uh, lest thou be a cursed thing like it, Read. but thou shalt utterly detest it. Hey, the Lord said so you should detest it. If you see a big old pile of damn, damn feces, we gotta leave. It kind of stink right now. We gotta go. We gotta move. Right? We gotta, we gotta flee. If you see a big old snake 
right, and all of this, and you're going to utterly detest that thing, you're going to flee from it. The same way that idol around your neck, the Lord said you should utterly hate that thing, right? And thou shall utterly abhor it. Abhor it means to hate it, right? So, sister, knowing that that's an accursed thing, right, the Lord hates that, and you even fulfill the prophecy of having wood upon your neck and serving it in a land which you don't know, what are you going to do knowing how the Lord feels about these idols? Before you ask, I got one more piece of food. This is the book of Leviticus, chapter 26 and verse 1. Bring it out. It shall make you no idols. Hey, the Lord said, don't make you no idols. Don't make a so-called uh, image of Jesus Christ. Right? Don't make a cross. Don't make little angels to bow down and worship to. Read. No graven images. Neither ran you up a standing image. Neither shall you set up any image of stone in your land to bow down unto it. Hey, people bow down to the cross in Christianity. They pray before the Lord. I when I was a kid, we used to have prayer downtown. We used to come before the, 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 the damn steps, right, right before the pastor. Do, do y'all do that? Y'all used to do that in church? They have it all at the altar. Hey, you come to the altar. You bow down, and it's literally a wooden cross. You literally bowing down to these great images and not even knowing. That's right. Because it's so mentally destroyed, and no one reads the Bible. That's right. You literally just right. drop stairs and abomination to the Lord. The Lord looking down like, I can't believe this, sister. I can't believe this, brother. He might be serving me. He's serving this man. He don't even know it. The Lord hates that. So knowing that the Lord hates that, sister, will you remove that from your neck and take a step toward the Lord today as an Israelite woman? Throw it away, sister. Throw it away. Throw it in the water. There you go, sister. That's right. That's right. Right. That's a mighty thing that this sister did. Ha. Ha. Hey, that's a mighty thing that this sister did. That's right. Right? That was mighty, and the Lord loves that. The Lord loves when you actually take steps toward him and not be taught by precepts of men. Right in their philosophies and doctrines. Right, give me the book of Isaiah chapter 29 and verse 9. Right? Give me the book of uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 3. This is the book of Isaiah chapter 29 and verse 9. Bring it out. Say, uh, stay yourselves and wonder. Cry ye out and cry. They are drunken. Hey, the Lord said our people are drunk. Now you sober right now, sister? Yeah, you sober on a physical level, but on a spiritual level, you may be drunk. You don't know the sister. You're a princess walking this earth. There's right. no need to uh, wear certain hairstyles, different colors. There's no need to dress certain ways. We're drunk and we don't even know it. Our sisters had tight clothes on, showing their ass. Our sisters do a lot for men. Men do a lot of abominable things for our others, for the sisters. And the Lord how people are drunk. Read. They are drunken. But not with wine. Not with physical wine. But what are we drinking with? They stagger, but not with strong drink. Now people are staggering. They don't know which way to go. But they staggering into Christianity, staggering to uh, Roman Catholicism, Islam. Read. For the Lord hath poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep. And the Lord put some of us to sleep on a deep level. The Lord put us to sleep as a nation. Now it's time to wake up. Now it's time to understand who you are according to the Bible. Now it's time to take your steps toward repentance like the sister just did. And that was a mighty, mighty uh, thing you did. So come on, come on. Read on. And, oh, uh, for the Lord hath poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep, right? And hath closed your eyes. Hey, the Lord closed our eyes. When did he close our eyes? In slavery, right? When we didn't know a damn thing. But now what are we doing now? We waking up, brother. What's your nationality? He an Israelite. You That's can't right. tell him otherwise, man. Read. The prophets and your rulers. Now right, you can rush right there. Bring it out, Ken. It's the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 4 and verse 3. Right? Bring it out. But if our gospel be hid. Hey, the Lord said if our gospel be hid, why would the gospel ever be hid? I thought it was every Bible in America. I thought everybody got a Bible in their house. Why does the Lord say if the gospel be hid? Can't you go to any church anytime you want? That's lies in those churches. This is the gospel being hid. You not knowing who you are. That's it being hid, man. Hey, brother, what's your nationality, brother? What's your nationality? He said he Hebrew. Well, he know a little something, right? Right? But if he really knew something, he'll be up here listening. That's right. Right, read. All right. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Hey, if our gospel be hid, it's hid to the ones that are lost, man. Meaning the ones that keep walking around in sin on a Sabbath day, not keeping the commandments, not dressing 
like how we ought to as men and women of the Lord. Read. Verse 4. And whom the God of this world. Now who is the God of this world? All right, but on a deeper level, who's the God of this world? Satan. He's the God of this world. Because this world is wicked and evil. Right? He's the God of this whole world. Now, Satan sets up the so-called white man. And he, and he does all his attributes through him. Read. And whom the God of this world have blinded. And the God of this world be Satan blinded certain brothers and sisters. Read. The minds of them which believe that. Hey, certain people don't believe this. We telling them God can't believe who you are. And some people just walking up, I'm black. I don't care. I'm a color. I'm, I'm a, I love this thing. Right? Right. Black power is strong and it is what it is. And the Lord not dealing with no black power, man. The Lord not getting down with that. Right? You can wrestle with you, where you at. Give me the book of Numbers, chapter 15. You can wrestle with God. Give me the book of Numbers, chapter 15. Let's get some commandments. So now that we know that we Israelites, right? Are we Israelites? Yeah. They're not saying it like we know yeah. that. Hey, right, brother, I wish the nationality. There you go. That's right. He proclaimed it loud. Sisters, y'all got to know who y'all are and be proud of that. In the Holy Bible, the Lord himself told you that your princesses walk in the earth. You got right. chosen people. Right. Ain't nobody above you. Right. When you close to him, all you got to do is repent and come back to him. You no longer what the so-called white man tells you, but you are a child of God. As an Israelite walking this earth. That's right. right. Give me the book of Numbers, chapter 15. This is the book of this Numbers, book. chapter 15, verse 38. Bring it out. Speak unto the children of Israel right. and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments. Now, what a fringe. Fringes are what you see on all of your brother's garments. Right? All of their garments, you see fringes. Right? Now, the Lord said, bid Right? Bid them. He didn't make them. Tell them. Instruct them. Let them make them fringes in the borders of their garments. Put it on the bottom. Read. Throughout their generation. Now, just in the ancient world. Throughout, throughout their, their generation. generation. And the Lord said, throughout your generation. Like right here, you have uh, uh, ancient forefathers. Right? And they had a long garment on down to the foot. And they had fringes upon their garments. Then this is how we dressed in the ancient world. We didn't have on the clothing that we have on now. Read on. Throughout their generation. That they put upon. Throughout their generation. And that they put upon the fringe of the borders of a ribbon of blue. And that's why we have a ribbon of blue upon our fringes. We're commanded by the Lord himself throughout all our generations to dress like this, read. And it shall be unto you for a fringe that ye may look upon it and remember all the commandments remember, of the- Remember all the commandments. So that's why we wear fringes, to remember every single commandment, right? To remember where we are going on, right? So if I put these fringes on, right? And I was like, you know what? I, I, I feel the uh, damn spirit of smoking to come upon me. I'm supposed to look down and put my fringes. I said, I can't do that. That's easy, right? I can't have sex with my uh, brother's wife. Right? I can't commit adultery. Right? I can't uh, do all of these wicked things, right? And put these things up as far as idols. That's wicked. Now, how do I know that? Because I look upon my fringes and it reminds me of the commandments. Read. And it shall be up unto you for a fringe that ye may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord and do them. Right? And that ye seek not after your own heart and your own eye, after which ye used to go holy, that ye, that ye may remember and do all my commandments, right? and be holy unto your God. Right? Verse 41. I am the Lord your God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt to be your God. I am the Lord your God. So the Lord said that he's your God. Isn't your possessor? Isn't that your purse, your sunglasses? Isn't that your mask? Right? Isn't that your hat? Right? Isn't that your woman? Right? These things are possessive. So why is the Lord calling us his people? Why didn't he say everybody? Why is he saying that the Israelites are his people? Does anybody know? I mean, yeah, but it's to signify that we are special to him. All of the Israelites. All right, what else, what else would you say? Why is the Lord saying that the Israelites are his people? I'm the Lord, your God. What if I told this child right here, I'm your father? Does that mean I'm everybody's father? Why is the Lord saying he's our God? Huh? 
Is he the God of anybody else in this world? No. What you said? What about you? You said, you said what, sister? You said no? I'm asking. He's not. Who is he the God of? There you go. That's right. He's right. He's literally the God of the Israelites. All throughout the Bible, you read Genesis through Revelation. He's the God of the Israelites from the beginning to the end, right? That's in the Bible. Now, how do we know this? We got to figure these things out. Give me the book of Matthew. Right, chapter 15 and verse 24. I got you. Read the book of Matthew, chapter 15 and verse 24. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 15, verse 24. But he answered and said. Now this is so-called Jesus Christ. He say so-called because his real name is Yahweh God. Right? He answered and said. I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He said he's only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He's only sent. So if I'm a messenger and I come into a town and I say I'm only sent to do X, Y, and Z, meaning don't, don't ask me nothing else, I'm only sent to do this. The Lord said, look, I'm only sent to the Israelites. Don't ask me no questions. Right don't ask for no healing. Don't ask for no salvation. Don't ask for nothing else because I'm only here for the Israelites. Right. Right. Give me the book of Jeremiah, chapter 3 and verse 23. Give me the book of Joel, chapter 2 and verse 27. Give me the book of Joel, chapter 2 verse 27. Bring it out. Ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. And that I am the Lord your God and none else. And what? And, and none, none else. else. And the Lord said, You're going to know when I'm in the midst of Israel that I'm the Lord your God and nobody else. And what? And my people shall no. never be ashamed. Now just think about it. Why are we the only people on earth catching hell? Everybody else got a business, a gas station, a company, currencies of money, government. They literally live in their heaven. Look at this. We're the only people living like this, man. Why? Because our father's punishing us. Like a good father, any good father that loves their child would do. Uh, now after we repent, wash our hands and come back to the Lord, he's going to give us all our goodly pleasures that he's promised to us from the very beginning. I mean everything. Now only a wicked father would just keep their son in the damn corner forever. Just kind of close the door, don't feed him, don't care about him. The son kind of crying, right? He beating himself up in the room. And the Lord not getting down like that. He only chastised us because we broke the commands. So what's going to happen when we keep the command? He said we're going to come out of it. What you say, sister? So, my question is, so you saying we, we punish us because we broke the command? I can't hear you, sister. You saying he punished us because we broke the command? Right. Okay, so the command was came from the right. No, so no, no. Give me the book of Luke chapter 1 and verse 7. Yeah, Okay, well, we're going to break it down. The commandments did not come from the so-called white man. Yeah, we so, birthed the so-called white right, man. Right, so we birthed them, but the slavery, the whole mindset that's still going on, so we still get punished. Because, you know, the white man's going on doing all this work, so why we do You said the white man's doing all that. I can't hear you, sister. I'm saying, you're saying the Ten Commandments, the commandments. We're being punished because we didn't, we broke the commandments. Right. And I need to know, like, where the commandments, where it started from. Where, where it started from, the commandments? Yeah, do break it from the Okay, well that's a good question. That's a good question. Give me the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 47. All right, bring it up. The book of Psalms, chapter 68, verse 11. Bring it up. Bring it up. It's in Luke 1 and 7. Oh, God. Book of Luke chapter 1 and 7. The book of Luke. I'm about to show you the commandments were here from the very beginning. Right, give me the book of Genesis. I will. Right, give me the book of Genesis, chapter 8, verse 10. Right, bring it up. It's the book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 7. Right, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets. As the Lord spake by the mouth of the holy prophets. Which have been, which since, have been since the world began. And the Lord said the prophets were on the earth since the world began. I mean, from the very first time when the Lord created man, he created the prophets. And if the prophets were here, they were doing what? Prophesying the words of the Lord. They weren't speaking their own things. Now the Lord said, as he has spake, meaning his word by the mouth of the holy prophets, which have been since the world again. So from the very first time that man was created upon and walking this earth, the prophets have been. So since the prophets have been, they were prophesying the words of the Lord. So if they were prophesying the words of the Lord and we birthed the so-called white man, we would keep the commands way before the white man existed. Huh. Right? Give me the book, right? Of uh, 